What's up everybody, Jeremy at Gilbrook Farm and today I wanted to make a real quick cooking video since we just got our new kitchen all set up and established finally with new appliances and our awesome little 4x10 island here. Wanted to make a dish that I haven't made in quite a long time and that is a Pittsburgh steak salad. It's quick, easy and delicious and it's good for you. Why is it called a Pittsburgh steak salad? I have no idea. I grew up near Pittsburgh and we used to eat them all the time. The only difference between a steak salad and a Pittsburgh steak salad that I know of is it has the big fat steak french fries on it. So make a steak, make a salad, do some fries, put it all together, cover it with the dressing you like, boom, Pittsburgh steak salad. So I've already made a salad, lettuce, carrots, onions, stuff that I had just sitting around. Here is the important part and that is the steak. Any cut of meat will do as long as you cook it right. This is a rib steak of sorts, grass fed. Important thing for this, uh, cooking inside, I'm gonna pan sear it in cast iron and then slow roast it in the oven using convection roast, mainly because we do not have an outdoor grill yet. We're about to get another one, but I want steak and I'm gonna make it inside, so. So I thawed it in the refrigerator for a day, then I marinated it for about 12 hours in my own special sauce of stuff, pulled it out, let it come to room temperature, and then seasoned it with some Montreal steak seasoning. Let it sit until it comes to room temperature before you start cooking it. Step one. All right, we're gonna make fries first because they take the longest. Just get yourself a pan. Get yourself some parchment paper because they are. Good. it is good for up to like 450 degrees in the oven. It makes it super easy to not have to clean up a mess afterwards. You can cut your own fries if you want. Typically we do, but I also happen to have a leftover bag of steak fries that I need to use up before they all get freezer burned, so that's what we're doing. Garlic, powder, Himalayan sea salt, black pepper. I like pepper. All right, so this is our new oven. This is a microwave oven combination and it does both convection and regular, so it's pretty fancy. And I've figured out that I think convection cooking is so awesome. That is where it moves the air with a fan around the entire oven and cooks more evenly. There are no hot spots. I'm loving it. I'm still figuring it out, but it cooks faster than a typical oven when you're using convection. So that's what we're gonna try. You have to modify your recipe a little bit based on the package of French fries that we're cooking. It says 425 for 30 minutes. We're gonna convect bake and it's going to convert that for us. So if we say convect bake, say convert recipe, yes, 425 is the typical temperature and the typical time is 30 minutes. Start. Now, it's going to preheat and it's going to tell us once it's preheated and ready and then we'll stick the fries in. Another super important reason that I'm doing the fries first is that once they're done, the oven will already be preheated so that we can actually cook the steak properly. When you're cooking the steak in an oven, you need to sear it in something like a cast iron pan at a really high temperature, like at least 500, maybe 600 degrees if you can get it that hot. Sear it on each side for about 30 to 45 seconds to get a good caramelized crust and then immediately move it into your oven to finish it off uh, on a broil. So we're going to actually roast it where broiler is on the top, baking elements on the bottom. It's gonna get all that heat from both sides with the convection. So hopefully that's gonna work out real good. We're gonna do it at like 275, low and slow, because it's a grass fed piece of meat. So we're gonna try that out for the first time here. And I'm actually gonna use the temperature probe that came with this so we know for sure what our internal temperature is. We're gonna try and get it up to 140 internal temperature. So that should not take very long. If you don't have a temperature probe in your oven, just use a regular meat thermometer. If you're trying to cook steaks or roasts or anything in your oven, always have a meat thermometer. Otherwise you're gonna either under or overcook it. And you don't wanna be poking it with a fork to see if it's done. Just use a thermometer. All right, it's preheated. So it converted the recipe from 425 degrees to 400, and now we're gonna put in our fries. Put that in the middle rack. Okay, fries are done. At least the oven says they are. We're gonna check them. Mm -hmm. Actually, 
actually, that looks pretty good. So the good thing about convection cooking is it makes a nice crispy golden brown outside without making the inside all gross and rock hard. So I'm gonna take these and put them in the microwave just to stay warm and then let this oven cool down a little bit and then start the steak because the oven right now is like 400 something and we need it to be down around 275. So we're gonna start the steak next. Here's our steak. It is now finally room temperature, seasoned, ready to roll. Like I said, the cut of the meat doesn't really matter for a steak salad because we're just gonna take the meat and cut it off and get it all into our salad. And I think I'm gonna use just a, an olive oil spray rather than regular olive oil because this particular cut of meat has quite a bit of fat in it and I don't wanna get it too splashy and, you know, all kinds of spatter. So we'll just get this sort of wet. Now I'm gonna bring that up to as hot as I can possibly get it actually. All right, so I've been heating up this pan for a while. You can see this uh, olive oil spray is starting to get super hot. I'm trying to get this pan as hot as I can without burning it. Now we're about 500 degrees and we're gonna put our meat on and we're gonna sear it. So I'm going to use tongs because you don't wanna poke your meat with a fork and drain the juice. And really what we're trying to do is get a nice sear on each side. I'm gonna use this to keep it from splashing all over our not yet installed backsplash. I'm gonna try to sear this for about 30 to 45 seconds on each side and I'll try to get the edges if I can, but it's not super important for this particular meal. And when you have a piece of meat that has the bone, sometimes the bone will hold the meat off of the pan, so smush it on there. Just let it sear. All right, so it's been about 45 seconds on the second side. I'm gonna take this and move it over to a roasting pan. Okay. Now the reason I moved this to a different pan is because if I would have put the cast iron directly into the oven, it's super hot and it would continue cooking it and would end up overcooking it. So what we're gonna do now is put the temperature probe into the meat, away from the bone, right in the center, and we're gonna convect roast this. Putting it into the center of the oven and we plug it into the little outlet thingy that it has right on the side. And when you plug that in, up here it says, hey, what are you doing? What probe temp do you want? Well, I want my internal temperature to be about 145 when I'm done. And uh, then I want to convect roast, which heats from the top and the bottom, at about 275. And then I'm going to start it. And right now we're at 88 degrees internal. So this is how you can cook a steak in your oven using convection, if you have a convection oven and get the internal temperature exactly where it needs to be so that you don't overcook it or undercook it. If you don't have a temperature probe that comes with your oven, just use a regular oven thermometer, like I said earlier. Uh, they're inexpensive and they will save you from ruining a good cut of meat. This is at 93 degrees. We're gonna wait till it gets to 140, 145, and it'll be done. Looking pretty good to me. There we go, cooking complete. It shuts off the heater, and now it's going to try and cool it down. So we're gonna pull this out and check it. Hopefully this works. All right, close that. I'm gonna set that here. Pull this out. Voila. It looks amazing. I'm gonna let this rest for about five minutes. It'll finish cooking, and then we're gonna cut into it and see if we got what we were trying to get. 
Again, this is a weird cut of meat. It's a rib steak, which I've never cooked, but man, that, that looks like a perfectly medium steak to me. I'm just gonna cut this into little bite-sized pieces so that we can put it onto our salad. I like mine a little bit more done, but man, that is perfectly juicy. I mean, I think this process is my new favorite. I'd call that pretty medium, maybe a little medium rare. All right, now that our steak is done, we can plate our food. I've already made the salad, like I said. Take your salad, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, or a lot. We're gonna get our fries that we kept warm and that are perfect. And you just kind of put them on there. Pittsburgh steak salad is a salad with steak fries that are seasoned however you want. And steak. There you go. And in the interest of making this as unhealthy and delicious as I possibly can, I'm going to put some ranch on it. It is organic, farm-raised, cage-free, grass-fed, non-GMO. It's freaking good. All right, there you go. Now you have a... That is a Pittsburgh steak salad, just like I remember. This is also my first cooking video, so if you're interested in seeing more, uh, maybe I'll make some more. Right now I'm going to eat the heck out of this thing, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Peace.